The Way to the Beyond From the Sutta Nipata The sixteen disciples of Bavari came to the Buddha to ask questions. The Buddha said, For Bavari and for all of your group, there are many different doubts and confusions. You now have the opportunity to ask about them. Ask now whatever you want to know. The Buddha had given Ajita permission. So the Brahmin student respectfully sat down, made the folded hand gesture, and addressed his first question to the thus gone, the Tathagata. What is it, said Ajita, that smothers the world? What makes the world so hard to see? What would you say pollutes the world and what threatens it most? It is ignorance which smothers, said the master. And it is carelessness and greed which make the world invisible. The hunger of desire pollutes the world and the great source of fear is the pain of suffering. In every direction, said Ajita, the rivers of desire are running. How can we dam them? And what will hold them back? What can we use to close the floodgates? Any river can be stopped with the dam of mindfulness, said the Buddha. I call it the flood stopper. And with wisdom, you can close the floodgates. Sir, said Ajita, where there is wisdom and mindfulness, there is also the hybrid of mind and matter. The generation of individuality. What brings it all to a halt? This is the answer to your question, Ajita said the master. Individuality can be brought to a total end by the cessation of consciousness. Sir, said Ajita, there are people here who have mastered all the teachings and there are students and apprentices and ordinary people too. Tell me how these people should live and work. Let them be like a wanderer, a monk, said the Buddha. Mindful and skillful in every way, they should free themselves from pleasure hunger and make their minds calm and undisturbed. Then the Brahmin student Tisa Mateya asked the master some questions.
Who in the world is happy? he asked. Is there anyone who isn't full of agitation? Is there anyone who can understand the alternatives without getting stuck in their thinking between them? And who would you say deserve the title Super Being? Who is there who isn't caught up in the patchwork world of greed? There is a person who is not full of agitation, answered the Buddha. It is the one whose actions in a sensuous world are pure and good. They do not have the thirst of craving. They never lose mindfulness. And they have, by their own decision, become extinguished, calm. They understand the alternatives without being stuck in the thinking between them. This is whom I would call a super being, one beyond the patchwork world of greed. The Brahmin student Punaka was the next to speak. I have come, he said, to ask a question of the one without desire, the one with root depth vision. It is this, Master, that I would like you to explain. Why is it that the wise men in the world, the Brahmins, the rulers and others, have always offered sacrifices to the gods? These men, said the Buddha, were always making offerings to gods because as they grew older, they wanted to preserve their lives as they were. But Master, said Punaka, did they ever get beyond old age and birth by making all these careful offerings? Their prayers, said the Buddha, their praises, their offerings and aspirations were all made on a basis of possession, of reward. They longed for sensual pleasure. These men, these experts in offering, were delighting in the passion for becoming. These men could not go beyond getting old and being born. You must explain this to me, Master, said Punaka. If all the offerings of the experts couldn't get them beyond ageing and birth, then who of all people who, of all the gods, has ever managed to go beyond? When a person has assessed the world from top to bottom, the master said, when there is nothing in the world that raises a flicker of agitation, then they have become a person free from the smoke fumes, the tremblings and the hunger of desire. They have become calm. 
They have gone beyond getting old. They have gone beyond being born. Then the Brahmin student Metagu asked his question. Master, he said, you are clearly a mind of full development and a master of knowledge. Where on earth do all the different kinds of suffering come from? This is a question, said the master, about the birth and growth of suffering. I will answer it in the way that I myself have found it, which is this. All the different forms of suffering develop from the basic clinging. When a person does not realize this, they make the basic attachment. The sluggish mind will undergo suffering. When a person realizes this, they should not make the basic attachment, seeing where suffering starts and grows. That clearly answers what I ask, sir, said Metagu. Please answer this one too for me, because of your certain knowledge. How do wise people cross the ocean? How can they get beyond the aging process? How can they get beyond birth, or sadness, or sorrow? The master replied, I will explain to you the truth, not based on hearsay. First, realize that this way is one which can be known here and now, as a result of which a mindfully living person releases their hold on the world. Master teacher, Metagu said, for me there can only be joy and delight to hear you talk about a supreme way, which, when a mindfully living person knows it, releases their hold on the world. The Master continued, In every direction there are things you know and recognize, above, below, around and within. Leave them. Do not look to them for rest or relief. Do not let consciousness dwell on the products of existence, on things that come and go. This is how the wandering monk lives. They go from place to place, mindful and resolute. They do without cherished objects and come to understand the world. So they leave ageing and birth behind. They leave sadness and sorrow behind. And they let go of suffering here itself. These great words of wisdom 
are full of joy for me, said Metagu. Gotama's description of non-attachment is perfect. This master clearly has let go of suffering. He has found and understood it, just as it is the way things work. The people whom you, the wisdom master, regularly teach will certainly lose suffering. As for me, I have come here to honour you, to bow down before you, a hero. I ask you, Master, to give me frequent teachings. The Master answered, When you are aware that a man is a Brahmin, a master of knowledge, a person with nothing, a creature with no ties to being or to pleasure. Then, Metagu, you have found an ocean crosser, a traveller beyond the deserts and the doubts, a voyager who has reached the other shore. This is a knower, a master of knowledge, a hero who has dissipated the pool of constant becoming, a person who has lost the clinging, the trembling and the hunger of desire. This, I would say, is the person who has gone beyond getting old. They have gone beyond being born. The Brahmin student Dautika was the next to speak. Master, he said, I so much want to hear you speak. Please, master teacher, explain to me. Can a student of your teachings find the calm of cessation, Nibbana, for themselves? Any student of my teaching, said the Buddha, who is eager, intelligent and aware, here and now can find the calm of cessation for themselves. I can see now, said Dautika, that there is in this world a man who has nothing, a Brahmin, a wanderer, I bow down and honour you, sir, the eye that sees everything. Please, man of Sakya, free me from confusion. It is not in my practice to free anyone from confusion, said the Buddha. When you have understood the most valuable teachings then you yourself will cross this ocean. Have pity on me, Brahman, sir, said Dautika. Please teach me the way of detachment, so that I can know it as it is, so that I can live in this life, in the peace and independence that is as free as the air in space. I will explain that peace, which is not based on hearsay, 
and is attainable here and now. It is a peace which when a mindful person understands it, releases their hold on the world. Master teacher, said Dotika, it can only bring me joy to hear about an ultimate peace which, when a mindful person understands it, releases their hold on the world. In every direction, said the Buddha, above, below, around, and within, there are things you know and recognize. When you realize that these are the things which tie you to the world, then you can lose the thirst of craving, the desire for constant becomings. Then the Brahman student Upasiva asked a question. Man of Sakya, he said, It is not possible for me to cross the massive ocean alone and without help. You are the eye that sees everything. Please tell me what I can use to help me across the ocean. The master told Upasiva, Use these two things to help you cross the ocean. The perception of nothingness and the awareness that there is nothing. Give up sense pleasures and be free from doubts so you will begin to see and to long for an end to craving. Master, said Upasiva, when a person is free from attachment to all pleasures and depends on nothingness and everything else he lets go, he is freed in the supreme freedom from perception. But will he permanently be there and not return again? When a person is freed, said the Buddha, from all sense pleasures and depends on nothingness, they are free in the supreme freedom from perception. They will stay there and not return again. Master, you have the eye that sees everything, said Upasiva. If this person stays many years in this state without returning, will be cooled and freed there itself. Say whether consciousness will still exist for such a person. It is like a flame struck by a sudden gust of wind, said the Buddha. In a flash it has gone out, and nothing more can be known about it. It is the same with a wise person, freed from mental existence. In a flash, they have gone out, and nothing more can be known about them. Please explain this clearly to me, sir, said Upasiva. You, 
a wise man, know precisely the way these things work. Has the man disappeared? Does he simply not exist? Or is he in some state of perpetual well-being? When a person has gone out, then there is nothing by which you can measure them, that by which they can be talked about is no longer there for them. You cannot say that he does not exist. When all ways of being, all phenomena are removed, then all ways of description have also been removed. The next of the Brahmin students to speak was Nanda. This is what he asked the Buddha. Many people, he said, talk of wise men who they say are living in the world. What do you think about this? When they call someone wise, are they talking about his knowledge or about the way he lives. To the experts, said the master, the word wise has nothing to do with the way a person sees things or with what he has been taught or with what he understands. To me, Nanda, a wise one is one who has disarmed. They live in seclusion, without the tremble or the hunger of desire. Then, Master, said Nanda, there is another question I must ask you. All religious teachers and Brahmins have talked about the way to be pure. Some have said that purity comes from world views and from teachings. Some have said it comes from good deeds and religious rituals. Others have said it comes from other things. Would you say, sir, that these men living in this world, who've taught these things, have gone beyond birth and ageing? I would say this about religious leaders who teach that views and teachings or deeds and rituals or anything else will make you pure. I would say that these men living in this world have not gone beyond birth and ageing. But Master, said Nanda, these men who teach that purity comes from views and teachings, or deeds and rituals and other things, these men are religious leaders, and you say that they are not ocean crossers. I must ask you another question, sir. Can you, a wise man, say who in the world has gone beyond birth and ageing? I do not say that all religious teachers and Brahmins are wrapped in the shroud of birth and ageing, said the Buddha. There are some who have let go of worldviews, of teaching traditions of thoughts. 
They have let go of religious practices and rituals. They have left all the different forms behind and they have a total understanding of attachments. For them, there are no inner poison drives. These truly are the ocean crosses. How perfect is the wisdom master's explanation of non-attachment, said Nanda. It fills me with joy to hear it, and to hear that there are people who have let go of views, of traditions, of thoughts, of religious practices and rituals, and of all the different forms. And these people have a total understanding of attachment. They have lost the inner poison drives. These are the people whom I too will call the ocean crosses. Hemaka was the next to speak. Before Gotama began to teach, he said, All teachings I had heard had only said, This is how things used to be, and this is how they're going to be. Everything was based on tradition and hearsay, which just increased my doubts. So please now, Wisdom Master, explain to me the way you teach to put an end to craving. Explain to me the way you teach which, when a mindful living person knows it, releases their hold on the world. The removal of desire and passion for pleasant things, seen, heard or cognized, is a sure path for the realization of Nibbana. Understanding this, those who are mindful have attained this tranquility of complete Nibbana in this immediate life. They are calmed forever. They have crossed the attachment in this world. The Brahmin student Todea spoke next. What, sir, is the nature of freedom? He questioned the master. When one has no more desire for pleasure, goes beyond doubt and lives without craving. A person who has no desires said the Buddha, who has gone beyond doubt and who lives without craving, has indeed found the final freedom. For them, there is nothing more to be freed. All-seeing Sakyan said to Daya, please explain one other thing to me. I want to know how to recognize a wise person when I see them. Does the wise one still have any desires? Or are they completely wishless? 
Do they still need to learn? Or is their wisdom complete? A wise one, Todea, said the Buddha, does not have desires, nor do they need to learn. They are wishless, they have wisdom. And you can recognize them because they are a person of nothing. They are not hanging on to pleasure or to being. Next was the Brahmin student Kappa. Sir, he said, there are people stuck midstream in the terror and the fear of the rush of the river of being, and death and decay overwhelm them. For their sake, sir, tell me where to find an island. Tell me where there is solid ground beyond the reach of all this pain. Kappa, said the master, for the sake of those people stuck in the middle of the river of being, overwhelmed by death and decay, I will tell you where to find solid ground. There is an island, an island which you cannot go beyond. It is a place of nothingness, a place of non-possession and of non-attachment. It is the total end of death and decay. And this is why I call it Nibbana, the extinguished, the cool. There are people who, in mindfulness, have realized this and are completely cooled here and now. They do not become slaves working for Mara, for death. They cannot fall into his power. Then the Brahmin student Jatukani spoke. I had heard, he said, that there was an ocean crosser, a hero, desiring the desireless. And so I have come to ask a question of this man without desire. Tell me this, I of instant seeing knowing. What is a state of peace? Please explain it to me as it really is. You, Master, rule desire and pleasure like the sun with heat and light rules and controls the earth. I have only a little understanding, sir, and you are a globe full of wisdom. Tell me how to find and know the way of giving up this world of births and agings. The Buddha replied to Jatukani, Lose the greed for pleasure. See how letting go of the world is peacefulness. There is nothing that you need to hold on to and there is nothing that you need push away.
dry up the remains of your past and have nothing for your future. If you do not cling to the present, then you can go from place to place in peace. There is a greed that fixes on the individual body-mind. When that greed has completely gone, then, Brahman, there will be no more inner poison drives, without which you are immune from death. The student Brahman Bhadravuda spoke next. I have come, he said, to ask a question. Thirstbreaker, wishless, free and wise, beyond time and home, life and pleasure. Please, ocean crosser, for all the different people here who have come from different places to listen to your words, Tell us about the way that you have found and known. The Master replied, There is, in taking things, a thirst, a clinging, a grasping. You must lose it. You must lose it altogether. Above, below, around, and within. It makes no difference what it is you are grasping at. When a person grasps, Mara stands beside them. Therefore, the wise one Realising this should not grasp at anything, being mindful. They should see the beings that are creatures of attachment as tied to the power of death. Then the Brahman student Udiya spoke. Gone beyond in every way, he said, the ultimate in everything. When he sits in meditation, there is no poison to infect him, no dust speck to impede him. He has done what has to be done. This is the man I have come to with my question, and this, sir, is it. Can you tell me about the knowledge that frees? Can you tell me how to remove ignorance? The removal of both the intense desire for sensuous things, said the Buddha, and the grief, the rejection of laziness, and the resistance to worry. The purity of perfect, balanced mindfulness, built on a basis of seeing the way things are. This is liberation knowledge, and this 
is the destruction of ignorance. Udaya asked another question. What binds and ties down the world? What causes the wandering? What is it that you abandon in order to find Nibbana? That which ties you down, said the Buddha, is the desire for pleasure. The wandering is applied thought. And the way to Nibbana is to abandon the thirst of desire. I have come with these questions, Master, and I hope you will answer one more, said Udaya. How does the mindful wanderer bring their mind flow to an end? The Master replied, The sensations that one feels from the inside have no more fascination for them. And the sensations that one feels from the outside no longer fascinate. The wanderer is mindful and brings their mind flow to an end. Then the student, Posala, got up to speak. In everything, he said to the master, you have reached perfection. There is not a movement of desire, nor a remnant of doubt left in you. And so I have come to you, who can explain what has happened in the past, to ask this question. I want to ask you, man of Sakya, about knowledge. If a person is no longer confined to seeing forms, if they have discarded materialist limitations, and they see that there is neither inner nor outer substance to things. Is there then anything more for them to know? To the Tathagata, the man thus come, replied the Buddha. All the aspects and stages of mind are clear. And so, when a person who has his sights on freedom reaches their goal, the Tathagata knows what stage they have reached. When one has realized that the binding power of pleasure is rooted in nothingness. Then they have come to a clear understanding of this process. This knowledge, they, the completely accomplished Brahman, has achieved completely.
The next to speak was the Brahmin student, Mogaraja. Man of Sakya, he said, I have asked about this twice before without receiving an answer from the wisdom eye. But I have heard that if a wisdom god is asked a third time, then he will give an answer. I do not know, famous Gotama, what attitude you take towards this world and towards the other world, the world of Brahma and the gods. So, because of your insight into excellence, I have come to ask you about this. What is the best way for a person to regard the world so that the king of death won't see them? The master replied, If you are always aware, Mogaraja, you will look at the world and see its emptiness. If you give up looking at yourself as a soul, as a fixed and special identity, then you have given yourself a way to go beyond death. Look at the world like this, and the king of death will not see you. Then the Brahman Pingia spoke. I am old and decaying. My body is weak and my skin is pale. I can hardly see. And I only hear with difficulty. Don't let me die while I am still in confusion. But teach me about the way things are, so that I shall know how to leave birth and ageing behind me. Look, replied the Buddha, look how many people are tormented by pain. Look how careless they are and how greatly they suffer because of body and forms. If you do not want to go on and on becoming Pingia, you must let go of the body and of forms. In all the ten directions, said Pingia, above, below, and in every quarter of the compass, there is not a thing that you have not heard, seen, known, or understood. Teach me about the way things are, so that I shall know how to leave birth and ageing behind me. Can you see, replied the Buddha, how people are oppressed by desire? Can you see how they are racked and worn by aging? 
If you do not want to go on and on becoming, Pingia, you must let go of craving. This is what the Master said when the sixteen Brahmins came to the rock temple in Magadha to ask him to answer their questions. If you know what each question means, see what each question implies and live in accordance with the way things are, then you will go beyond. You will cross the ocean of death and ageing and reach the other shore. These things lead to that other shore. That is why this teaching is called Parayana, the way to the beyond. The Buddha answered the questions of the Brahmins with the exactness of truth, just as things are. The Brahmins were pleased to hear the words of this wise man. And so, filled with pleasure by the clear-sighted vision of this kinsman of the sun, they settled down to a life of purity and goodness, spent in the shelter of the precious wisdom of the Buddha. Anyone whose life accords with what the Buddha taught in these answers goes across the ocean. From here to the beyond. From this shore to the other. This is crossing the ocean. This is travelling on the highest path It is a path that leads to that other shore. That is why it is called Parayana, the way to the beyond. I will sing you the praises of the way to the beyond, said Pingia, when he returned to where the Brahmin Bavari lives, on the banks of the river Godavari. It was described to us by this man exactly as he saw it. But then... There isn't any reason why a man like him should lie. A mammoth of knowledge and completely pure. A man without desire. When a voice has none of the glibness of pride and none of the ingrained stains of ignorance, then its words are full of sweetness and beauty. It is such words that I praise now. They call him Buddha, enlightened, awake. 
dissolving darkness with total vision and knowing the world to its ends. He has gone beyond all the states of being and of becoming. He has no inner poison drives. He is the total elimination of suffering. This man, Brahman Bhavari, is the man I follow. It is like a bird that leaves the bushes of the scrubland and flies to the fruit trees of the forest. I too have left the bleary half-light of opinions. Like a swan, I have reached a great lake. Up till now, before I heard Gotama's teaching, people had always told me this. This is how it has always been and this is how it will always be. Only the constant refrain of tradition, a breeding ground for speculation. This prince, this beam of light, Gotama, was the only one who dissolved the darkness. This man, Gotama, is a universe of wisdom and a world of understanding. A teacher whose dharma is the way things are. Instant, immediate and visible all round. Eroding desire without harmful side effects with nothing else quite like it anywhere in the world. But Pingia, said Bavari, why then don't you spend all your time, your every moment, with this man Gotama, this universe of wisdom, this world of understanding, this teacher whose dharma is the way things are, instant, immediate and visible all around, eroding desire without harmful side effects and with nothing else quite like it anywhere in the world. Brahman, sir, said Pingia, there is no moment for me, however small, that is spent away from Gotama, from this universe of wisdom, this world of understanding. This teacher whose teaching is the way things are, instant, immediate, and visible all around, eroding desire without harmful side effects, with nothing else quite like it anywhere in the world. You see, sir, said Pingia, with constant and careful vigilance, it is possible for me to see him with my mind as clearly with my eyes in night as well as day. And since I spend my nights revering him, there is not to my mind a single moment spent away from him. I cannot now move away from the teaching of Gotama. The powers of confidence and joy, of intellect and awareness, hold me there. 
whichever way this universe of wisdom goes, it draws me with it. Physically, I cannot move like that. My body is decaying. I am old and weak. But the driving power of purposeful thought propels me with it without break. There was a time when writhing in the mud of the swamps, I could only drift from one stone to the next. But then I saw the Sun Buddha, fully awake and free from defilement. Then the Buddha spoke. Pingya, he said. Other people have freed themselves by the power of confidence. Vakali, Bhadravuda and Alali Gotama have all done this. You too should let that strength release you. You too will go to the further shore, beyond the draw of death. These words, said Pingya, are the words of a man of wisdom. As I hear them, I become more confident. This man is some Buddha. He has opened the curtains and woken up. There is nothing barren there. His mind is clear and luminous. Everything accessible to knowledge is known to him. Even the ultimate subtleties of Godhood. There are no more questions for the doubtful who come to him. The teacher has answered them all. Yes, I shall go there. I shall go beyond change. I shall go beyond formations. I shall go beyond comparison. There are no more doubts. You may consider this as mind released. <laughs>